Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. So the video today, it is on a 2003 Peugeot 307. Sorry guys, the postman just had a package for me. Uh, so yeah, it's a 2003 Peugeot 307, 2 liter uh, diesel. And uh, I have literally no background about this car. Uh, other than came to me like this okay uh, but uh, what I've been told is the following the for some reason well I think I know the reason uh, the the top cover of this key has been changed as you can see probably the buttons were all gone which is a common issue on these keys uh, the actually opened button is damaged as well, so it locks, but then I can't really unlock it unless I open the key and uh, and I short the, the button. So the remote works, guys. I just don't want to show you that because it's going to... Um, then I, you will not unlock, but... Um, oh, actually, I have the button there. Hold on a second, guys. I can actually show you that it works. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so, look. Okay, you've seen this? Can you hear it? Try to lock. Uh, the key is for this car, for this BSI. But the car doesn't start. I don't know if there is battery on it. The car came on a, on a track. Let me see if the, if he... How it does. Okay, I don't know if you heard the cranking. So it does cranks, it doesn't start. The reason is, and the guy that brought me this knew about it, is because they lost the transponder when they did this work. So when they replaced this, they lost the transponder. I, I could open the key now, which I will do uh, later this stage, obviously to put a transponder here, but basically they lost the transponder. So what we're going to do next, I might need to plug the charge into this, uh, just updating the Artipad, uh, doing it purely because there is a page of updating there. So we'll do it first, but I'm going to show you on live data that indeed the transponder is not here. Uh, and um, and we'll go from there really. So this should be nearly finishing. Let me turn the ignition on. There we go. Is in well, that's in actually in Portuguese, but is in uh, economy mode. Uh, but that will come out of economy mode as soon as we start the engine. Put this a little bit less clear. Okay, and the auto scan failed, so I had to come through here. So this video, guys, in the end, should not be much more than actually a key programming, which I'm going to try to use the Artipad from start to finish, see if we can program a key with it. Or a new transponder, I would say. Okay, so we are in the BSI right now. It's going to read the trouble codes. And surely we'll be immobilizer stuff. Maybe wrong key. No, no trouble codes found. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go back. Let's go to the engine ECU. Is the RHS RHS? Okay, forget about the additives. Additives, additives. Hmm. So DPFs and additives, turbos. Forget about all that. Okay, interesting that there's nothing here. Let's go to data stream. Uh, control unit condition. Okay, ECU is locked. Awaited response from BSI. Uh, matched ECU so the ECU is matched uh, to the car 
or is, is obviously has been programmed still say it's locked and it's locked let me turn the ignition off okay figuring correct there we go it's used still locked it's awaiting the response from BSI because the key is the wrong key so if we go back now get out <clears throat> let me see if there's anything else just uh, curiosity for that but I don't think there is anything else for keys or nope no okay let's go to BSI again and check some live data here oh, come on Read data stream, mobilizer. So, blank BSI, no BSI, anti scanning mode, no BSI matched, yes. ECM locked, yes. Key one synchronized, yes. Key two synchronized, no. Number of remotes, two remotes. Transponding, anti scanning, active, yes. Uh, transponder, key number learned, two keys. Transponder label recognized no okay so that's where my problem is because it's not recognized uh, but definitely guys I will show you in a second there is no there's anything else here no there isn't so yeah so uh, basically there is no transponder there uh, there's nothing else isn't it now so once again onto there um, it's interesting that it doesn't tell me that the key is not being detected or something like that. It says no trouble codes, uh, trouble codes found, but... Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do, guys, I'm going to open this key uh, and, and uh, uh, show you that there is no transponder on it. I already had it open. Uh, I might replace that button that is damaged. I was never asked to look at that, but I will might do that as well. But the first thing we need, guys, is the pin code for this car now. There is no pin code. There's no security card. The pin code at the moment is unknown. Uh, I don't know yet where I'm going to take the pin code from. If I'm going to use the NGDCU or the BSI, I'm going to have to think about it. Uh, but yes, yeah, stay tuned. I will take you through the entire process. Okay, and I decided to go for uh, the NGDCU for the simple fact that this is a EDC 15C2 really easy to open they are not very uh, tight sealed because this U uh, is actually placed inside the fuse box on the engine so but purely for this because that's my problem it's going to be so easy to just remove read get the pin solder it back on job done so that's what we're going to do next Okay, so let's gonna do this. So the first thing uh, I'm gonna do is remove this uh, apron, which is a it's this way. Sorry, guys. Which is let me put light. Which is this one here. It's a let me see if I can focus. Focus phone. There we go. It's a five P zero eight C three. So that's my process. Uh, sorry, that's my EPROM. So yes, I could I could read the 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 BSI, but unless I'm really uh, mistaken, I believe the BSI on this card does have a processor. Uh, yes, I could read the processor, but that would mean uh, connections. And my experience with reading processors is that it's only be more tricky. It's a, it's, it's, it's a more uh, delicate job. Uh, pro uh, the EPROM guys, is take that off. That's it. It's that simple, really. Just take it off, read it, put it back, job done. Uh, it will take me two minutes, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, remove that and uh, put it on uh, on the adapter, Xprog, and retrieve the pin. And always mark the orientation. So I put the, the EPROM type here with the same orientation, the letters, as the EPROM, so I'll know which way to put it back. Okay, chip in place. Okay, let's kind of 
open the software and see if we can read this. Okay, and let's go new. I've already select the chip as you can see in there. It's going to read. And there is go. There is my data. Now, um looking at this data, I think okay, this is a quite small chip as you can see. I think I've seen the pin already in there but let's gonna use a small software to retrieve the pin and then uh, we'll confirm if I got the right pin or not but it looks like 38729 perhaps it's strange that it doesn't have letters Pejos usually they have letters but unless the pin is encrypted but let's gonna have a look Okay guys, and after fiddling a little bit, I think I found one that actually reads this. It looks like the pin is actually encrypted. So it's a PSA, as you can see in there, so EDC 15C2. I'm gonna load my EPROM. And actually, the as you have seen, uh, once that's done, the actually, the actually software changed the file name to the pin so I've done it already but just to show you again what is the thing you know uh, I don't even know where to put it so EKT3 I'm not sure if this is the right pin but uh, where did he put the f oh there is there is the file so um, I'm gonna try this pin. Uh, I have a dump of the the, the EPROM now, so even if this is wrong, I can always try different softwares. Um, and yeah, let's gonna see if uh, EKT3 is indeed my pin. So we're gonna put the the, the EPROM back onto this U, put it on the car, and go from there. Okay, and we are back on on the car. Uh, the the battery, you can see the cables there. The battery is on charge. ECU is closed and put back in place. I strongly believe the transponder for this is a ID46 or a PCF17936. It's our pin code. As you can see the key, the remote, one of the buttons is broken. That one in there. So we we'll might get this repaired. Uh, but the transponder is actually not there. So we are going to try to fix this now. Okay, the glare is absolutely terrible now, but I'll do my best. So. A new transponder here. I'm gonna try to do this with the key just like that. So let's gonna try this. Let's go back. Back. Oh no, sorry. No. Manual select. No, it's already automatically search. I came back too far, sorry. Okay, let's try this again. System selection. BSI. Okay. Condition is on. Let's see if the RTPAD can program this well, if we have the right pin. Program of keys. Okay, we don't have a zeros or a uh, I. So, E. Let's put this in capitals. Not sure if it makes a difference. Don't think it does, but... E. K. T. Our oh, number. Three. Okay. Usually asks for more than one, so E, K, T, three. Number of keys, so it looks like our pin is okay. Good, well, let's see. Uh, so it's one key only, I want to program. One key. Okay. Unlock the vehicle and remove the key. So. Remove the key. Okay. Switch on ignition using key number one. Ignition on. Key already programmed. Okay. So now it says to resynchronize blah 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 blah. Okay. And that should be my procedure. Done. So I'm going to cycle the ignition now. Key off. 
as you can see my transponder is there I'm just holding it because I'm gonna have to glue the transponder let's on it key on again and now let's see what my live data says let's see if my ECU is now unlocked data stream mobilizer let's select everything okay Oh, come on. Oops. Okay. Data stream. Mobilizer. Select all. Okay. ECM locked. Look at that. No. So, my key. That is just for the remote. So my key, learned one key, transponder label recognized, yes. So I just need to learn the remote now, but, uh, or resynchronize the remote, but that's it for now guys. All I need to do now is hopefully crank the engine and my engine should start. Let's gonna try this. I'm gonna turn ignition off once more. It's gonna turn it on. Uh, there's nothing there that's gonna fail out, I think. Come on. He's... I can see it right. Oh, he's a shit. Come on. Let's try once more. I don't know for how long. Come on. Nearly there. There we go. Engine running. Right, job done. Don't know why it took so long to start. I don't know exactly what happened for how long. So I already came off. Oh, shut up. I already came off from uh, economy mode. As soon as the engine starts, it would do. Um, and I think that's it really for this uh, video, guys. If there's any other issues with the car, it says in there the additive level is low. Uh, pass. Uh, all I was asked to do was to start the engine, which we just did. Program the new key. So all I'm going to do now is resync the remotes. There is a procedure that you can search on Google, uh, but the, the Artipad actually showed me uh, at the end. It gives the instructions on how to resync the remote. Uh, I'm going to replace those two buttons anyway. Uh, just to make sure I have a good working order remote because otherwise it's going to be a little bit tricky to do this with that broken button. But yeah, that's it. We successfully programmed another key to the car. And um, let's turn it off, see if it starts better this time now. Off. Started way better this time. Don't know. My was because it was off for some time, perhaps, don't know. Okay, guys, so that's it for this video. Uh, what else to say? Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope there's some information here you guys saying can take it uh, forward and you, you've learned something today. Um, yeah, that's it, really, guys. Thank you for watching. Like always.